Hey guys, welcome to the Kellogg Garden YouTube channel. Today, I'm gonna take you on a tour of my orchard. We have over 30 fruit trees in our orchard, tons of fruit trees from tropical to stone fruit. So let's go take a look, and I'll talk a little bit about what we do to take care of them and make them really thrive. So come on. So in our orchard, we have a three-level orchard. It's tiered. And on the top part of the orchard, we have all of our evergreen citrus fruit trees, which means that these trees stay green all year long. They don't lose their leaves. That's why we put them on the top part of our orchard so that we could see beautiful green leaves all year long. We have several different types of mandarins. We have lemons, limes, oranges, all the delicious citrus fruits trees that we get to enjoy here in zone nine and 10. Now, some of these trees were here when we moved in and they were in really bad shape. They'd been neglected for a really long time and they needed our help. So what did we do? The first thing that we did was try to rejuvenate the soil. So there was just bare soil here. It was dry. The irrigation hadn't been on in a really long time. It was covered in weeds. And so we brought in truckloads and truckloads of mulch. If you guys have seen any of my other videos, you know that I really talk about mulch a lot because it's one of the most beneficial things you can do in, uh, in your garden, particularly if you're in a really warm area like the Southwest. And what does mulch do? Well, this mulch is gonna help hold in moisture. It's also going to break down and become organic matter. The other thing that it does is it makes weeding so much easier. Here in our orchard, hi Nepali. <laughs> Here in our orchard, we have two of the worst weeds, Bermuda grass and nut sedge, and they're really hard to uh, manage, but by adding tons of mulch, we can easily pull up the uh, weeds that grow in our orchard. So we brought in tons and tons of mulch so that we could make the soil as happy as possible. The other thing we did was added much better irrigation so that we could water our trees. Okay, so up top we got all of our citrus. Now down below we've got some other really neat plants. This is our fig tree, which is a pink fig. It's amazing. We've got a longanberry, which is actually related to lychee. And it gets these really cool fruits that are about this big and taste almost like grapes. They're so delicious. You can see that we're, we're flowering now. And so we're gonna have fruit uh, come this summer and this fall. This tree is huge and every year we lop it to stay a lot smaller. This is not a dwarf sized tree. It was here when we moved in and so we have to stay on top of pruning it or it gets so big we can't even pick the fruit. So if we look over here, we have, um, this is an Oro Blanco grapefruit. If you don't like grapefruit, this is your grapefruit tree because it is the best tasting grapefruit in my humble opinion. And then we also have um, our stone fruit. So these are deciduous fruit trees, which means they're gonna lose all of their leaves in the winter time. And then in the spring, they're gonna give us beautiful blooms and flowers, leaves, and then fruit. So this fruit here is my all time favorite. This is called Nectar Plum. It's a cross between a nectarine and a plum. The variety is called Spice, Spice Z. And I just, it really is my favorite fruit. You can tell because I have one, two, three of the same fruit trees in my orchard, so you know it's good. Now, deciduous fruit trees are very different in the way that you care for them than citrus fruit trees because they their, their um, growth pattern is different. They're gonna give you flowers and leaves and fruit in the spring into the summer, and then in the winter, they're gonna lose all of their leaves and become dormant. And, and that is what um, deciduous means. They lose all their leaves. So you have a very short period of time to make sure that you get all of the fruit that you want and you need to care for the tree during that time so that you get delicious, big, fat, juicy fruits. One of the biggest tips I can give you is to make sure that you thin your fruit. You can see on here, I have fruit that is evenly spaced throughout the tree. I don't have clusters of three or four. And that's because we've gone in and we've actually picked off the baby fruit as soon as it forms. Less is more, especially on a fruit tree of this size. This fruit tree is probably only two to three years old. So it's a relatively small fruit tree. 
And I don't want it to become overloaded with fruit because the branches will break, they'll touch the ground, and then you'll have insects and, and you know mice and things that want to eat your fruit. So you really want to do the very hard task of taking off some of that extra fruit so that you have an even amount on the tree that's healthy that the tree can ripen. So let's see if I can find an example of, like, <clears throat> this is a pretty good example. This is a very low hanging branch and we've got two pieces of fruit here. And when these get really big, when they get this big, they're gonna hang and they're gonna touch the ground or even worse, they're just gonna break this branch. So I'm gonna go in, I know it's hard. I'm gonna pull off one of the fruits. Now, I would recommend doing it sooner than later. You don't want the tree to waste its energy even growing it this big. So the smaller the fruit is, the better it is for you to go in and do your thinning. So we've done most of the thinning on this tree and you can tell that it's, the fruit is evenly dispersed and that's gonna make for a much better harvest. Okay guys, so I've talked a little bit about thinning your fruits on your deciduous fruit trees. Now make sure you stay tuned for part two. Where we're gonna talk about pruning your fruit trees and how to fertilize them. Thank you.